All right. Let's see. Sounds working. Let's take a look at this. So, sorry I wasn't able to finish up the anatomy in class, uh, but this shouldn't take too long. We've looked at the basics of homology and analogy. Uh, we've looked at anatomical direction. We've explored the skull, the axial skeleton, the vertebral column in particular, the pectoral girdle, and forelimb. So all we have to wrap up is the pelvic girdle and the hind limb. The pelvic girdle, or it's called the pelvis, or in English the hips, um, is actually of a lot of significance for the study of dinosaurs. Obviously it's important for the dinosaurs themselves, uh, and indeed for all creatures with hind limbs, um, but it's actually been historically very useful in identifying dinosaurs and major subgroups, so we definitely need to explore it. So here we see the pelvis of a young Tyrannosaurus. There's a little closer in. And here we see the same individual, but this is before it was mounted. Now, the pelvis is comprised of three different bones on each side of the body. So three on the left, three on the right. And these are the ilium, which is always the dorsalmost, so the uppermost. It's also the one that actually connects up to the vertebrae. And then the one that attaches anteriorly is called the pubis, and the one that attaches posteriorly is called the ischium. So ilium, pubis, and ischium. Get to know these bones. Note also I said that the pubis attaches anteriorly, that is, in front. However, as we will see, there are dinosaurs in which the shaft of the pubis does not point strictly downward or toward the front, but actually points backwards. But you can always tell it by where it attaches. Now, these three bones sur surround a hole or opening, and that's the hip socket. Now, in most animals, this hip socket, or acetabulum, that's the technical term, is closed. That is, the ilium the ischium and the pubis meet together on the inside. So there's a wall of bone on the inside, be covered with cartilage, and then the thigh bone, we'll call it the femur when we get to it, fits in there. Dinosaurs are unusual and recognizable by not having a wall of bone. What you're seeing is actually one of the sacral vertebra behind it. In life, there would have been a sheet of cartilage, but there's no wall of bone. We'll when we get to the second section of the course, at the very beginning of the second section of the course, we'll talk about this in more detail, but it's a dinosaurian trait. It's one of the ways we recognize them as having an open or perforate acetabulum. Ilium, pubis, ischium, acetabulum. And in what view is this? So that's a right lateral view. Heads over here, tails over here. Now here's the pelvis of a different dinosaur. This is Stegosaurus. And again, there's the ilium on top. The pubis attaches anteriorly, and it's got this forward projection, but the shaft here, that is homologous to the pubic shaft in Tyrannosaurus. So it's mostly pointing backwards, but it attaches anteriorly. There's the ischium, and in between them is an open acetabulum, although you could see there's part of a um, a flap, basically, of the ilium, which has grown over and covered it, and then the thigh bone would fit in there. So the scapula and coracoid, the shoulder girdle, doesn't actually have a bone connection to the ribs or the vertebrae. It's connected by soft tissue, or at least firm tissue. Um, not so the ilium. The ilium actually has a bony connection to the vertebrae in dinosaurs and in us too. Uh, in fact, when you, you may talk, well, you yourself may have this, particularly if you've been in some sort of injury. Um, your folks and your grandparents almost certainly complain on occasion about the sacroiliac joint. What is that sacroiliac? The connection between the sacrum and the ilium. And so that would be where these projections, the transverse processes, technically called sacral ribs. We won't worry about that. The transverse processes of the sacrum reach out and have a connection to the ilium. 
So there's a suture there. That's the sacroiliac joint. So these are sacral vertebrae, anterior over here, posterior over here. You're looking down, you see a left ilium here. You see part of the right ilium over there, and then the pubis and ischium down there. Hopefully that makes sense. In this case, we see how many? One, two, three sacral vertebrae that connect the axial skeleton to the pelvic girdle. Now the hind limb. The structure of the hind limb is extremely similar to the structure of the forelimb. One bone, a joint, two bones, some little bones, a series of long bones, and then a series of long bones coming off of each of those. Same thing, but they're different parts of the body, so they have different names. The thigh bone, oh sorry, the thigh bone is the femur. The femur, plural is femora, by the way, the femur is typically the largest bone in a dinosaur's body. Um, there are a few in which the humerus is the largest. Uh, there are some in which the small, small ones in which the tibia is the lar largest, but the femur is typically the largest bone in the body. That's true of us as well, actually. There is no kneecap in Mesozoic dinosaurs. Uh, that uh, was not an attribute they had. They had a uh, cartilaginous structure down here. Then there's two bones in the lower leg, or the shin. There is the medial more, weight-bearing, large bone, and that's the tibia. So the tibia is the more medial, it's thicker, it's primarily the weight-bearing bone. And then there's a more slender bone, it's more lateral, and that's the fibula. Notice the ending, U-L-A. In Latin, that means a small, a small thing. Dracula. By the way, so Romanian is uh, derived from Latin, is little dragon. Little dragon, Dracula. Um, fibula. So it's not fibia. Some people will talk about the fibia. There is no bone called the fibia. You can break your fibula and you could still bear weight on your leg, although it will probably hurt. If you break your tibia, you can't. So fibula. Or in the case of a drumstick, so a drumstick is actually the shin of a bird. Um, if you're eating like a, a turkey drumstick or a chicken drumstick, you find that sort of uh, wedge shape that pinches out at the bottom. That's actually the fibula of the bird, and the main bone you're holding is the tibia. In the wrist, we have, well, the wrist is the carpus made of individual carpals. The ankle is the tarsus made of individual tarsals or ankle bones. There are a couple tarsal bones. The uh, that we'll talk about in more detail later on. These are the proximal tarsals, but we won't deal with them in any great detail at the moment. Let's take a look at the foot. So the foot as a whole is called the pes. The plural of pes is pedes, P-E-D-E-S, and the adjective form is pedal, or pedal, P-E-D-A-L. So that's of or concerning the, fur, the foot. So there would be the tarsals, which have been removed in this image. Below the tarsals are the metatarsals. So remember, the metacarpus are the bones of the palm of the hand. The metatarsus are the bones of the sole of the foot. And it's made up of individual metatarsals, which are named metatarsal 1, with the Roman numeral 1, for the medial most, to metatarsal 5 for the lateral most. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Below the metatarsals, are the individual digits, just like in the hand. They're digits for toes, as they are for fingers. Each digit is comprised of individual phalanges, singular phalanx again, toe bones. And if that distalmost phalanx has a claw or a hoof or a nail on it, we call it an ungual. So that's it. We've made our way through the anatomy of dinosaurs. Now, we will add some information later on. As I mentioned, we will talk a little bit about the proximal tarsals, the astragalus and the calcaneum, in a later lecture. We'll see some groups of dinosaurs that evolve new bones, and other ones where there are fusions of old bones into new structures. But this gives you the basics, and so be, please be familiar with them. We're now going to move from the topic of anatomy into issues of taxonomy and classification, and where do these strange names of dinosaurs come from? Take care, and see you in class.